Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, uh, um, all right, right, I thought I'd do a video, and this one is, uh, if you struggle with writing riffs, uh, I'm going to show you the framework um, that, that will enable you to write riffs, and uh, write riffs at will. This is what I call the infinite riff system. It, there's so many so many different riffs we could do in this, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this in the key of uh, E minor blues. I'm going to do it in the E minor blues here. Now, if you're not aware what the, the E minor blues is, uh, it's a scale. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, uh, the, the notes from that scale. I'm going to use them, essentially, to be, enable us to, um, uh, to build power chords based on those. So this is going to be one of a series of, of uh, videos that I will do. This one, um, it's, it's, a, it's a cracker. You'll be able to write riffs at will. So without further ado, here's the scale. The scale, the E blue scale, what we're going to do is we're going to start and we're going to play it all in one position down here. The first note I'm going to play is this E. Now let me just knock a bit of distortion up on that. It's a bit, uh, bit heavy. Right, so we've got an E here, which is the root note of our scale. And then what we've got at the third fret, we've got a G note, which is the flat third of the scale. Now, if I was going to play this as a minor pentatonic scale, I would play an open A string, and then the second fret of the A string would be the fifth of my, uh, of, of my scale. What we're going to do is we're going to add this flat five note, and that flat five is the the character note of the uh, the minor blues scale. That's the note that makes it sound um, uh, really really interesting in the scale. However, there is a caveat: if you stay on that note, yeah, and play it, offer it against the root note, it will sound a bit disgusting. <laughs> Or evil, yes. Uh, that's the devil's interval. That's why they call it the devil's interval. And and later on, I'll be able to show you how we can use that to our to 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 be able to create tension effects, which are used in things like heavy metal. So this is good for rock riffs. It's good for uh, metal riffs, and it's good for for just riffing in general and blues riffs, for that matter. So so the idea is we've got the the, the root flat third, the fourth flat five, fifth, and if you want to look, there's a there's a PDF that I'm going to put somewhere down here in a linky link down here. So I'll put a, a PDF in the link down here for the fifth. Flat seven, and then we have the root note E again. That's an octave. Now the thing is, little do you realise that 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 is a blue a, a riff based on the blue scale. So so it by learning this. What will happen is you'll be able to dismantle and uh, uh, riffs that you already know and go, hang on, that's a that's that's based around a, a blue scale, okay, and it makes it easier for you to then visualise and see what's going on uh, in that scale. Not not always 100% the case, bit of artistic license in there, but generally a lot of rock scale uh, rock riffs use. This flat five thing going on here. So, we've got that there. Now, the thing is, doesn't seem as if it's going to be uh, at all related, but if I shift that that uh, blue scale up here, we get Metallica. So, we get uh, Enter Sandman there. So, we go from Walk This Way Aerosmith to Metallica. And it, but really, it's exactly the same. It's the same riff. It's the same scale, um, but it's just in a little bit of a different position there. But it just shows you the the length and breadth of usage of this scale, right? So the thing is, okay, it's cool to have those notes down there. So if I, the, the idea is that I use each of those notes to build a power chord upon it. And what what is a power chord? A power chord is a two-note chord 
uh, uh, fundamentally, it's the root note and the fifth of the, the parent scale. So, so that's the fifth note up, do, re, mi, fa, so. so. One, two, three, four, five. So that's the fifth note. And that note is, it's really, it works really, really well with the root note. It's fairly transparent and it's a kind of a, it doesn't really have an emotional quality to it, which means it's great because you can do lots of different things to it. It'll work in a major or a minor setting. So we've got that one there. So we could take that note and turn that into a power chord. Now, if we look at the next note in the scale, we can play that as a power chord by using this shape here. There's two finger shape. But not only can we play that as a two finger fretted power chord, we can play it as an open power chord, which is a this is a, a, a kind of a devolved G shape. If you look at a G shape, you took your index finger off and you took your pinky off then what happens is you get the G chord. Now I'm muting the A string and I'm muting the thin E string as well. You, you know you've got that right hand shape because you get the hand of rock, yes? Now this is essentially, it's a double power chord because we have a root and a fifth, a root and a fifth. So it sounds massive. As opposed to the fretted, you can hear there's more ring on this one. It's a bit more ringy. And this is an open uh, G power chord because there are open strings. The next note up the scale, I'm just going to whiz through these, is an A note. Well, the easiest way to play that is to, instead of, you might hold your A like that or like that, but if you just use your first finger to go across and hold that next to your fret wire and play the A, D, A, A and D string or the A, D and G string, what will happen is you'll get an A5 power chord. That's a really nice chord. Then the next note in the scale is this this dreadful flat five, right? We're going to use it though because it can be it's awesome as well. I'm playing the power chord. Now you notice um, sometimes I actually use my little finger down here because the stretch is a little bit easier. This is the the place where it's hardest to hold your frets down. Yeah, the first fret. That's where all the string tension is. Yeah, so you might find find that a little bit easier. The reason I like to do that though is because I can move from a B flat five chord to an E flat five chord then. And you can hear that sounds like Black Sabbath now. So you've got Black Sabbath and So you get all those kind of uh, uh, sort of old school uh, uh, Tampa Bay metal uh, sounds out of that. So that's the flat five. Move up to the second fret of the A string. That's the B note, and that is the fifth of the scale. Put turn that into a power chord. And what happens is we get this little chromatic riff here that's possible. We can go from A to B flat to B. Right, and that's a nice move. So we can get that there, that's a really useful uh, place to play that. A cool thing is as well, if, if you've got chord ch changes that go... Um, oh, hang on, I'm thinking, I know what I'm thinking, ACDC. Well look how quick the change is there from that B to an A. 
Um, so we have um, computer went off there. Uh, we have this A, a B. The next chord we're gonna is based on this open uh, D chord, D string. Now, the way I play this is I play it like a D. If you were to play a D minor with that first finger on there, if you take that first finger off, you get the D uh, power chord, which is open D string. We've got the G string and the B string. That gives us a really nice, ringy, big sounding chord. So that gives us the D. So running through those all in order, we get the E5, we get the G5, we get the A5, we get the B flat 5, the B, then we get the D, and then we could go to the to the E. Now I'm using that. So it's worth noting that this power chord shape works on three different string pairs. It works on the D string and the G string as, as, a, as a chord. Just move those fingers out of the way. Don't hold the chord like that. Yeah. Move it down a string on the A and D string. Yeah. And it'll work. So that works in that way. So it will work all the way across there. It's a bit thinner sound in here. This is an E. And you can hear it's the same chord underneath it. Yeah, so that's a nice little shape as well. So that's using all those chords in that position down there. Now here's the thing, there's a lot of chords to remember there. What about if you look on that sheet and you can see I've, I've done a drawing of the E string going from the open E notes to the 12th fret, which is the octave. It's exactly the same note. Yeah, you know it's the same note. It's the, the interval from somewhere over the rainbow. So if I play that there, then the, the, the scale notes are here. 0, 3, 0, 1, 2 on the A string, 0, 2 on the D string. If I stretch those out on one string, however, here's what I get. 0, 3. Note the fingering. We want to use fingers one, two, three on that. That's the chromatic bit. That's A, B flat, and B. It's exactly the same notes. And then 10th fret, we get a D. And then 12th fret, we're back to where we start. So if I go. That way, I have all those root notes available on one string. So it means, after playing my open E power chord, all the shapes going up the neck now are fretted power chord shapes. So if I go like that, E, F, A, B flat, B, D, and then we get to uh, back to E. Yeah, so we get all the way up to the 12th fret there. Now that means we've got all these different opportunities to, to make these different sounds. If we want to look at it, say, stylistically, and I'll get my wah wah on this one here. This is an interesting idea. This is kind of a muse thing. And I'm using tw 10 and 12 here the octave thing to come up with riffs. Right, so. These will all sound great. It doesn't matter which order you put them. 
Now, I can, there's a formula that you can have, and it's generally three riffs for a song, and three chords for a riff. So if I was to randomly pick three chords out of that scale and use them to come up with a riff, then I can come up with infinite riffs. And remember, this is just an idea. You can expand upon it. You can uh, 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 condense it. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. But if I go, if so if I say, I don't know, uh, ease home, so it's always nice to start and finish there. So we'll start and finish there. Um, and if I say, I don't know, let's go six, which is that, that devil's interval one. And then we'll go to five. So if I put that together, then you can already hear a riff starting. So that could be one riff. You could add another chord. It's completely up to you. Um, so it's completely up to you how you want to do it. Sounds they sound particularly great with palm muted down here as well on the on the bridge there. So we'll palm mute there. Now I don't actually have to start on the E. I can start on the G. And I could use some of the other chords that are in there. Let me just see. Like if I'd use the G, the B, and the D. I actually used the C there, that wasn't part of it. Um, but regardless. So we've got all these options here. Now there is something a, a little bit wrong with this and that is the uh, economy of movement. If you look at, say I was going from a G to a D, there's a lot of distance to cover there. And it's fine if I want that kind of, uh, that, that sliding up to the chord sound or sliding down to the chord sound, it's very stylistic. Now if that's what I want, but it's not efficient. But it, the shorter the distance I can move to get to the next chord, then the quicker I can change. So I can put that chord here. What I've done is I've just taken the place that down there. That's a little hack where what you do is whatever fret you're at on, I'll say between the the E, A and D strings, if this doesn't work between the, the D and the G uh, string because of the, the way the guitar's tuned. But say you're at the 10th fret, don't count frets, do it as, as a, a sum. Yeah, do it as a, a mathematical uh, uh, sum. So we're, if we're at the 10th fret, yeah, if we said 10 minus 5, what do you get? You get 5. So if you move down to the next string, you get the same note. And if I do that, 5 minus 5 leaves us. So that moves us down to the open string. So you can hear, I get a D there, a D there, and a D there. So cool little thing just to, to enable you to find your way, find other places to find your chords instead of just. Now what happens as a kind of a side note is up here on the thick strings, because of the thickness of the strings, the timbre changes the, the sound of the strings and it sounds a little bit woolly and a bit flabby and a bit fat. Whereas in this position, it sounds a little bit crisper. And in this position, it's very ringy and very sharp. And that's due to the thickness of the strings affecting the, the uh, uh, sonic quality, the timbre of the strings. But they're the same, you know. And that can be handy for, for when you're working out songs and you want to know oh, what position is that being played then you're listening for the timbre of the song 
Right, so we have that. So if I was going to go from the G to the D. And then, so what I have to do is just basically I have to move that chord like that. Or, and alternatively, getting back to these G power, this G shape, the open, open chord version. I particularly like that one because it's very ACDC. And all I end up moving is, is my second finger. So that's another way of playing it. So it means that we can develop moving up the neck. I could go A, B flat, B, D, E. Yeah, so I can get the, that's where the, these, a lot of these riffs come from. So if I look at that, and, and I can also, it also means if I've shifted my power chords to my A and my D string, it means I can then use my E as a drone note, which is pretty cool. So if I go like this. So in between power mute chugging on this E string, I just insert a chord that is based on that scale. So I'm going to play an E, a D, and then I'll go down to a B. So I'll, I'll show you how that sounds. So, hopefully that makes sense to you. The other benefit is, is if I, just going to use my little looper here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record that riff actually, and then I'm going to show you a cool thing as the, as a side effect of that, because it's good to know where, where to solo over these things as well. And it's in exactly the same position. The scale that you use to, com to, to compose the riff is the scale that you use to solo over the top. It's nice and easy. So uh, let me just, uh, I'll just get this, um, I'll put my looper on here. So here that scale transposes up here. So the thing is, they go. Uh, I hope that's uh, been useful to you guys. Um, I'll drop some other stuff if you have any questions around this. Just rewind it. It's all in here, but just keep on rewinding and uh, you'll uh, find something interesting to do with this. Remember, this is just in the key of E. If I wanted to, this is a caveat, I didn't realise I was going to put this on there. If I move this to the key of G. Yeah, if I move that to the key of G. Then I get lots of different chords. And I'm just making these riffs up off the top of my head. No thought really going into them. Uh, they sound great. Uh, and, you know, they move about all over the place. In, in 12 keys, you've got to go at. You know, uh, so this will move in, and it will go into 12 different positions, which is awesome. Uh, 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 so if you want to remind me to do the drop D version, I will do as well. Okay, then, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. Uh, I'll see you next time.